All right, this lesson is going to be the first in kind of a two-part series on new plot. Uh, the first one's going to be a, a real brief introduction to show you some of the kind of most basic commands uh, that we'll use in an interactive mode. Uh, in the second one, we're going to learn how to use it more interactively and uh, export plots uh, with several different formats that we might use uh, in a publication. Uh, so the second one's going to focus more on producing the publication quality figures, while this first one is more just a kind of getting to know new plot and, and using it interactively. <coughs> so we've already used it a little bit in class, um, but you may, you know, I may have not given you a full explanation of what it is. It's a very powerful open source uh, data visualization tool. Um, one of the great things about it is it has a very large user base. Many people use it, so there's lots of uh, questions that are already answered out on the web. Uh, you know, I think a lot of uh, what makes good codes good is having a lot of users because uh, th there's a lot of help offered to you out there on the web. It has very good documentation and it's actively maintained. So several times a year uh, or, you know, at least once a year there, there typically is a new release of new plot. Uh, it was originally written by these two guys, Thomas Williams and Colin Kelly, when they were graduate students. Um, it is pronounced new plot, not the new plot, even though sometimes uh, I may catch myself making that same mistake. Um, any similarity to the GNU or the Free Software Foundation is actually purely a coincidence. So uh, the link is there. That is a hyperlink if you have, uh, you know, if you if you're, have the actual PDF slides um, that you download from the web page, you can you can uh, just click on that and it'll take you to the home page there. So in my opinion, what kind of what one of the things that makes new plot great and fun is that uh, you can start using it immediately. You can produce your first plot within just a few seconds, and I'll go ahead and show you how to do that if we switch over to the terminal. So we'll launch new plot, and uh, you can see that the version I'm using here is the the latest release, version 4.6. Um, uh, it's the one I asked you to install on on Shamu. If you if you've done it properly, you have the same version. Um, for now, you can see that it says the d default terminal type or the terminal type is set to X11. This is typically the default in, in Unix or Linux machines. Uh, we'll talk later in the next lecture about what, what terminals are and, and what that, the implications of that. But let's go ahead and, and create our first plot. So we can just simply say plot sign X and um, new plot goes ahead and pops up an X11 window. I'll show you here. We'll just leave it up right there. You can see it, it, it chooses some default values for us, so minus 1 to 1 on the, on the y-axis or the ordinate and minus 10 to 10 along the x-axis or the abscissa. So, of course, a lot of times these aren't, aren't good, really good uh, choices of, of axes. So, if, for instance, if we were to type, uh, you know, plot sine x, uh, x, we're going to actually create three plots here. Uh, and uh, x minus x cubed divided by 3, I'm sorry, divided by 6. Uh, you can see that the, the default value there is minus 200 to 200, and we can't really see what we're trying to see here, what's interesting about this plot. So uh, we can adjust the default values by uh, actually using this so that the, these brackets here will uh, be the, the lower and upper bounds of the first the, the abscissa and second the ordinate axis. So if you leave them blank it'll again choose the default but I can choose the you know I can change the y values here to say minus 2 to 2 and then plot the same plot so x x minus x cubed divided by 6 and you can see that the new plot is uh, kind of much more interesting. Um, we can also change the values by default. So um, just to, if we go back, you'll see that uh, you know if we don't uh, inline put the uh, ranges in there, we, we could also do something. We could use a command set y range. There's an equivalent x range, but we can set y range minus two to two, and that's going to set that globally for all time unless we unless we change that explicitly. So now we can run the same plot without uh, the inline uh, options and you'll see that we, we kind of reproduce the same behavior. 
Um, we can reset any global settings by typing reset, so then you see if we go back, then we have that, okay? So that's basically this, this slide just uh, in short summarizes what I just showed you. Newplot is very useful for uh, plotting data, and uh, so it expects the data to be numeric and, and white, say, white space separated. So if you have column separated data or something, you, you can still handle that. You have to use an additional command, um, but uh, by default, it, it expects white, white space to separate the columns in a data file. Um, so th we, uh, we, plot, we plot it using this using directive. Um, and we can plot multiple data sets in, in the same file using that. So um, I'll just go ahead and, and show you the first one here. Uh, we, I have a file called prices. Uh, maybe it makes uh, quickly just to show you what's in, what prices looks like. It's just three columns. So the first year is uh, date and then followed by two, two columns of numbers. So uh, if we launch a new plot, a new plot again, um, we can say plot prices, and we'll use using one to two. So this is going to plot the first column against the second, and then we can follow that up with plotting prices again using, and you can use abbreviations here. So any 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 unique, um, you can you can shorten the directive in this case using to anything that's unique, which in this case the U by itself is, is unique on the plot line. So we can, uh, in this case, use plot prices using one and three. So this will plot the first column versus the third column. Okay, um, I actually made a mistake there in that the, when, when we plot multiple, we don't need to write plot again. So in this case, we can just write prices using one to three, and you can see what, what shows up there. Okay. So um, we can then going further, we can, you know, by default, it'll, it chooses discrete points to plot, but we may want to collect those with a line, connect those with a line. So in that case, we'll use the width directive. So we'll just simply add width lines on, on the end. Um, so in this case, we will say width lines. Uh, again, we can abbreviate. Um, and then in the second case, we'll say width, I'll go ahead and type it out this time lines points and again we can abbreviate lines points for instance we could just say lines P and, and that'll do it so what you see the first plot is uh, connected by a straight line uh, the second line is connected by a straight line but also the point the discrete points are plotted with the X's there okay so this slide just summarizes th those commands um, we can also add unique titles. So uh, if we go back to, to this command, and, and you see by, by default, uh, you know, it, it kind of just puts the, the commands that we use to generate the plot in the legend, but, uh, you know, that, that's not really that useful. So um, we can also give it a, using the title directive. So we'll say title XYZ, and that'll give us uh, XYZ there. We can also abbreviate title, so we can say T, you know, P, Q, R. And, and now you see that we get uh, some more instructive labels up here. So if these were, say, two stock prices, um, you know, versus year, X, Y, Z, and, and, P, and P, Q, R. Okay. So we can also then uh, label our plot. So if you wanted to give it an X label, uh, label the, the ordinate axis, we could say year, um, I'm sorry, we need to use the set command, so we'll say set x label year, set y label price, 
give it a unit. Okay, now you notice just simply doing that doesn't change anything. We actually have to run the command replot, which will uh, rerun the, le the last plot command uh, with, with all the new settings. So in this case, if we, if we run replot, then we get year and price as well in, in our plot. Okay, so uh, this, this uh, chart here, just or this slide actually just summarizes that. Okay, now you, you running new plot interactively like this, uh, you know, can be useful to basically get the plot in the shape that we want it, uh, you know, in a kind of step-by-step -step fashion. But um, if we want to generate uh, many plots, you know, we don't want to run them interactively, so we want to have some script. But a lot of times what we can do is, is basically get our, run it interactively to get our first one set up the way we want to. And then we can export the commands that we used to create the plot uh, by issuing this save command. So if we go back over here, and now we just type uh, save, and then we give it some name. So we'll just call it plot prices. And the file extension doesn't matter. In this case, we could, uh, you know, a good one would be GP just to let you know it's a, a new plot file. So if we run, if we execute that, and then we exit out of this uh, new plot, then if we take a look at what that plot price is, is you'll see that it automatically generated uh, a script for us. You notice at the top there's a shebang line that's uh, issuing the, the new plot command that was actually run, followed by some comments. Uh, you'll notice there's two comments here, set terminal x11 and set output. We, we'll come back to those later. And then there's a whole bunch of commands that we didn't actually issue, but that are set by default. And so if we wanted to tweak this a little bit, we could come in here and just change these uh, briefly. But then finally, eventually we'll get to the end, and you can actually see commands that we in fact did set, uh, you know, we did run, in, in, including this one right here, okay? so. Then what we can do is if we start up new plot again, we can either directly load this, uh, so uh, plot prices.gp, and you'll see that uh, it reloads the, the graph that we had just created. Okay. So another, another way to run this would be uh, if we exit out of here, that we can actually take that script and, and make it executable. So let's uh, chmod all plus execute plot prices gp. And then if we run that guy, um, it'll it'll also we don't we don't even need to open up new plot. It'll just create the same plot uh, that we had created before. Okay. So um, in this slide that I had prepared, uh, you can see that I just gave an example of what it's doing, but I removed a lot of the material. So you you know I, I, there's the first few commands, and then I have this comment that I removed many many other ones uh, to kind of finally get back to the ones we actually did issue, because most of them are just the defaults. Um, it makes a nice way to, to go ahead and, and uh, kind of go in there and tweak the defaults a little bit, though, if you want to make some other changes before you produce some publication quality plot. So again, this, pl plot, this uh, slide just kind of uh, reiterates what I just did in the terminal, showing you that you can either load the command file or you can run them uh, as, as scripts, as Unix scripts. Um, so the next thing we're going to talk about smoothing data. Uh, so uh, Newplot has some nice features for smoothing the data, or making the data uh, plot uh, more unique, or, or you know, uh, better plot the data better uh, in a sorted fashion. So you, you, it could be a case where you, you know, if we well, let's go ahead and just start up Newplot. It could be a case where you have some data that's that's jumbled up. So if we just say plot jumbled. Uh, if you just say plot jumbled, you'll see the points there. But if we connect them with a line, so if we say plot jumbled with lines, then you can see that they're not in order. So the, the lines kind of doesn't don't mean anything. So then what we could do uh, is is actually plot. Uh, we could issue the directive smooth unique with line, and then. Uh, what you'll see is that it actually sorts based on the X, the X column or the first column. Uh, it sorts the data and then plots it such that you know we get a, a line that's meaningful. So again, this slide just summarizes that. Okay, there are other many other uh, 
data smoothing options. So if you don't want to plot a straight line, if you wanted to interpolate a smooth curve through data, you could you could do it with a, a Bezier curve, okay? And it's going to use an approximation order of n, where n is the number of data points. Um, S Bezier is the same as Bezier, but it first sorts the data or applies the unique transformation. Uh, then we have a CS splines, which is going to uh, basically do a cubic spline uh, transformation to the results. So uh, what you get here that's different than Bayesian, Bayesian actually uh, interpolates all the data so that you get a kind of a smooth fit to all the data, whereas the cubic splines uh, interpolate more locally so you can kind of pick up more local features to the data as opposed to one smooth line through the whole thing. And then you have some more control over that if you use the, uh, the ACS splines. Uh, you, you get a weighting function that you have to issue as a, as a third argument uh, to the using directive. So I'll let you just look up the documentation on that if you're interested. Okay, so we can also define functions to plot in, in new plot. Um, so in the interest of the time, I'm not going to go to the terminal window to kind of reproduce what you see on the screen there, but um, you know, uh, many of the trigonometric, or all the trigonometric functions, you know, cosine, sine, tangent, arc cosine, um, you know, all the inverse cosine trigonometric functions are defined, square roots defined. Most of your most common kind of graphical ca calculator functions are defined already, uh, but then we can, we can use, you know, this kind of syntax to define our own um, for plotting more complex things. Um, we can also perform transformations to data. So we can define functions and then we can use those functions to basically transform the data. And we use a syntax similar to um, similar to Microsoft Excel here. So what this would do if we define the function g of x that looks like this and then a, we can define a constant a to be set globally to some value say 23. We can then plot some data. I'm not specifying what but some data. We're going to plot the first column and then we're going to in the we're going to plot that against g uh, being evaluated as the first column per plus the second column. And so what we'll do is we'll take the values of our data file, uh, take the first column at each entry, add the second column, and then feed that into this function uh, to basically perform that calculation on, and then spit that out as a result. Okay. Um, just so you know, there's also column zero which is just basically the line number. So if you wanted to, this, this right here would plot the first, you know, if you only had one column in a file, you could, you could plot the, the, that first column versus the line number uh, to kind of give you a, a bin plot or something like that. So that, that, that would be uh, an example of the, the pseudo column zero. Okay, so new plot itself knows a li very little about the rendering of the, the terminal. So um, or the rendering of the plot. That's left to the terminal. There are many, many per terminals. We'll talk about a little bit about those. You know, we can we can output to PNG and PDF and LaTeX. Um, and in this case, the default terminal is X11. So it handles actually the the rendering of the points and the lines and the fill and etc. And so we can choose those explicitly uh, by specifying a line style. So if we have some function that we wanted to plot. <coughs> Uh, you know, w with the constant variable a there, um, we could choose the line style by by issuing this command here. So um, I'm just going to go go back over to the terminal and I'll say uh, say plot sign x, and you get to see what that is. But I can also say uh, line style two, and you see that the in x11 it changes the color. Some other terminals may actually change the line type. So we can say three. Four, you can see the color is changing as we increase the line style. Okay, we can also abbreviate this, of course, line style six, seven, for instance, and you see it's just changing the, the color. Um, if we were plotting data, we, we could also change the point style. Uh, we can change the line weight. So let's give you an example of that. Go back, um, issue the same line style seven with a line weight of, say, two. You can see a, a little thicker there line. If I go line weight 5, then you get an even thicker line. 
Okay, so these are some of the ways that you can style your plot. Um, of course, there's many, many more. If you want to take a look at what the terminal offers as far as styling, you can simply just type test. So if we type test, then it pulls up this uh, this test folder, and over here on the right side, you'll see, um, you know, the, the the line style one refers to a red line, solid line. The point style one refers to a plus, two, three, four, you can see. So if you go all the way down to, you know, say line style 35 is a blue solid line, um, but it's a blue filled triangle uh, as far as the point style goes. And again, in other terminals like EPS or PDF or whatever, you can actually have more complex line styles as well. So you can have colors, but then you can also have, you know, dashed lines and uh, you know, dotted lines and otherwise. There's some also some information about the line weight and pattern and some other things, okay? So this was just barely, you know, we're just barely scratching the surface here. Um, I don't really find an effective way to teach this, uh, to give you every plot that was ever, you know, every command you could ever issue in, in new plot. That would be a several weeks of lecture time. And I'm just, you know, it's not really an effective way to learn it because you'll never memorize them all. So I just kind of want you to be aware of some of the basic utility and keep in mind that probably any two-dimensional plot you've ever seen uh, can be rendered in very high quality using new plot and uh, many 3D plots as well, which we didn't really even talk about. Um, there's some pretty really good references out there. There's a great book called uh, New Plot in Action. Uh, by the way, these are hyperlinks, so if you have the PDF, you should be able to just click on these and it will take you to a link. In this case, for the book, uh, it's just a link to it on Amazon. But the other three are, uh, you know, web documentation. So if you click on this, this is a really good uh, tutorial or, uh, on the, the not so frequently asked questions uh, of new plots. So this should actually be not so frequency, frequently asked questions. Um, then, of course, there's the official doc documentation, and there's also a, kind of a, a link there to a reference card or a cheat sheet, if you will. So, uh, again, uh, we've only scratched the surface in this tutorial, and, uh, you know, there's many, many things you can do, and, and I'll refer you to, these, uh, to this further documentation to get help on those things.